talking about. Just what I came after. Oh, you not. Like seven pounds? Oh, yeah, we got some back and forth. Oh my god! Oh shit! Ah! Ah! Got it! Holy crap! Well, howdy, folks. Today I'd like to talk about understanding the spring white bass run, spawn, migration, etc. Uh, it's something I've been doing for 30 something years now. Uh, in this short video after this we only catch two um, but that's because it was 20 mile an hour winds about 40 degrees and, and this is in mid-april a uh, very huge cold front came through it rained about two to three inches last night um, so it was very tough the fish were there they just were not biting it was a very it was a poor day on the almanac and, and every other aspect of the conditions were just wrong but uh, it will get better I'm gonna go back next week and, and nail them all right every spring the white bass migrate out of the larger reservoirs and the larger river systems that is the Mississippi Ohio Tennessee Cumberland etc all the large rivers and they search for spawning grounds by going up the tributaries or, or what I call feeder creeks in search of clear water with sand bottoms and gravel bottoms um, and this is where I live specifically southeast Missouri that is normally uh, they'll come up as early as March the males always go first the males can be there a whole month before the females come now when that prime time is for me is about April 15th to April 25th uh, that's when the larger females follow up and that's when you have the opportunity to catch those big two and three pounders or bigger um, so what I'd like to talk about is understanding them okay now that you got the times now of course that time is going to be different for people that live in Minnesota or people that live in uh, southern Arkansas or whatever you have to learn that specific time but my general rule of thumb is you want three days in a row that are 73 to 75 degrees with warm nights for them fish to really take off and that's when you got that one hot week when the action is going to be non-stop and you'll catch huge numbers and very large fish now um, one important thing is the river levels or the reservoir levels the best thing you can have is a flood that is not caused by local rains for example right now the Mississippi River is flooded it's really high and it's pushing those creeks back that go into the Mississippi River but they're pushed back in clearish green color they're not swift and brown because of local rain around here when me and John showed up there the river is about six foot high at the specific location we went to but it was dead calm and perfectly really almost gin clear now one very important thing to look for is you got to target these specific areas on the stream that had the best success and that what I'm talking about that is for a bank fisherman people that do not have a boat you want to look for a thing called a fall line and that is going to vary according to how high the Mississippi River is or the Ohio River how far is going to push that stream back and what you want to look for is you want to target the specific hole where you still see current and you can tell where the holes are the last couple honey holes in that stream me and John found both of them last night with a little bit of work we found the exact 
section on the stream where the river suddenly changed from having current and having honey holes to being dead calm and pushed back. Sometimes it is that specific. But that is where those fish are going to stage up. and They'll always be in that first couple holes. Now a lot of times that will be a, a section of the stream that tapers off from high land to low land very quickly. A lot of times it'll be where a main secondary creek comes in where two creeks join together a lot of time it's right near there in both of these streams that we found it it was the case uh, it was where a major tributary tributary entered the creek that we were looking at and one of them it was about a mile above where they both met together it was still pushed back and the other one it was right where the two creeks met together is where the creek rapidly changed you could still see the current and the river didn't look any higher right there. It looked normal, but then you could look down river about a hundred yards and all of a sudden it was three foot deeper and, and uh, the, some of the trees on the bank were three foot underwater. That is one very important thing to look for if you're a bank fisherman because then you're still able to access it without a boat. Because where, one of the problems me and John had when we first arrived at our first creek was we could not access it because the water was so high you couldn't walk the banks there was millions of trees in your way you couldn't cast anywhere you can't tell where the holes are normally at unless you're an expert at that creek and you know where the holes are all the time then you kind of have an idea but it was so hard to fish that I regretted not bringing the boat because we could have probably did a lot better now next week if the Mississippi River does not go down or it comes higher or at least stays the same I am gonna put the canoe in there because I'll have way better uh, availability at targeting all those holes now like I said this this run occurs there's really one real good week but you got about two weeks total to where them females come up there because white bass abandon their nest after they lay their eggs they leave <clears throat> and uh, don't care for their young so those females will leave once the spawn is over uh, some stay up there I'm sure smaller ones and, and some stay in the river all year round but those are mostly your smaller fish and your males um, like I said we only caught two fish this day but stay tuned for later on because we will have a good white bass trip this year and also going to target some yellow bass as well um, anyway the the river levels is the most important thing uh, the higher the better because the more the higher the Mississippi is or whatever other major river that you live near the more I'm will migrate up the streams now if the Mississippi was to suddenly drop really fast at a high rate I'm pretty sure since the females are already up there that they would stay and go ahead and, and lay their eggs and then leave so that's something I might find out because the river is supposed to go down six feet this week um, all right guys hope this was a little helpful to you stay tuned first fish here we've been having some real problems the drum I think so yeah no white bass all right it's a little male but hey we've been struggling to find them the water's so clear and high it's hard for us to hit these holes guys i caught him on a gold and red berkeley Ber berkeley flicker shad finally we were about to wonder what to do yeah First fish of the day, finally. We've been really struggling. We may want to try this whole worm, huh? So we don't spook them. It's not the size we're looking for yet, but we did get a fish nonetheless. Yeah. 
It really wasn't in the deepest, even in the deepest part of the hole. It's kind of back where it starts tapering off. Yep. That's what I'm thinking. It's that brush pile attracting them here. Up a second. White bass the other day, we had to switch locations and go about one mile upriver. Uh, where we just were located, the Mississippi is pushing it back, but here there's current and it looks totally different. So somewhere in between here and where we just were, the river drops that much in elevation. And this is as far up as these white bass, I would say, could possibly come. They ain't gonna get through that. Could, but it's a small guy, but I'm happy just to get something. Me and him have had a hell of a day. Hey, at least we're got some. Oh, now John's on one. He's got a sunfish. Something, though. Call the record books. <laughs> well, there's one white bass here. There's also snags here. Oh, not as deep as you think. There's a log too. See that log comes across. And 